Praise the Lord. I welcome all of us to today's uh, morning and uh, leader service in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to believe that you came ready to be blessed. Hallelujah. And I want to assure you that God is going to bless you and surely something good is going to happen in the name of Jesus Christ. I just want you to believe today and trust God that He will speak to you and God is going to transform your life. We will learn about true leadership and I want to have that from the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. True leadership. What are the things that can divine to us who a true leader is? Hallelujah. Remember the agenda of this morning session is to prepare us to become people who have the capacity to handle harvest, to handle very many things, both spiritual matters and administrative issues and also things that concern us in this life, not just only here in the church. So it's a whole, it's a whole bakery, a whole kitchen that is preparing us to become a lot of things. Praise the Lord. And uh, I want us to have First Kings chapter 18 from verses 20 to 40. Somebody who knows to read very well, I want to welcome here, you here, so that you can read for us. Uh, that uh, June, I've seen you here now several times. You know how to read very well, right? I want you to come and read for us the scripture from the pulpit here. Mugeni siku ya kwanza, ni mugeni siku ya pili, anakalipiwa kidogo siku ya tatu, anafanya kazi. Hallelujah. Come and read for us 1 Kings chapter 18 from verses 20 to 40. Come and read for us. Okay, you want to read from there? That's fine. Please read. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 20 to 40. I'm reading from King, King James Version. So I have sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long have ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. 22. Then said Elijah unto the people, I even, I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal prophets are 450 men. 23. Let them therefore give us two ballots and let the let them choose one ballot for themselves and cut it into pieces and lay it on wood and put on fire under and I will dress the other ballot and lay it on wood and put on fire under and call ye on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answereth by fire let him be God and all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one ballot for yourselves, and dress it first. For ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put on fire under. And they, and they took the ballot which was, given the, which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal. From morning even until noon, saying, O oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they lived upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry, cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or with adventure, he is sleeping. 
Did you try to create that scenario? You know, sometimes we speak these things and we say, ah, we are just reading some papers. It is not reading the papers. Imagine that was a scenario, a true and real scenario of a servant of God who lived in his time. And he lived in that time when faith that people claimed to profess, it was not well defined who actually is running with the truth. June has read for us very clearly and very nicely. But that time of Elijah, there were bad prophets, there was bad worship, there was idol worship. It means there is no time in the universe when there will never be a contention or a people of a contrary opinion, especially when it comes to the things of the kingdom. There will always be a contrary opinion even in your own life. There are things you want to succeed in, but those things are facing opposition, challenges, sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. In this time, Elijah was in his office as a prophet. And part of his duties, which are the duties of a prophet, when we started this leadership service, I think I was able to describe a bit uh, the fivefold offices. Although I did not go into, into the depth of the matter, but I touched on what entails those offices. So one of the one of the um, job description of a prophet is to draw the hearts of people back to God. Hallelujah. That is one of the, the duties of a prophet. To draw people's hearts to God. Now, we know so much the ministry of a prophet to prophesy and saying whether the rain will rain today or tomorrow. And then we as believers, we are very busy now beginning to judge who was the last person to prophesy about the rain so that we know whether we will trust that one or we will trust those who prayed in general. And I can tell you, maybe God is answering the one who prayed for this rain in September last year. All these others, he has not even received your prayer. But we will judge by who was the last person who was so popular, who was hard praying for the rain. Do you know there are people who have never left the bush from the time this country started facing this calamity of farming and lack of rain? They don't produce themselves to be known. They don't announce themselves. They are even praying for you. Some of us, God is revealing to them their, our names. They pray for us by our names. Some of them are praying even for this church by the name of the church itself. But then, <clears throat> I come here or somebody else comes here and announces something and it happens and we die. Oh, that is the man who has finally unlocked that mirror. There are things that happen, and I want to tell you it's because of cry, a cry of somebody that you will not live to see. That is why your duty when something happens is not to glorify the prophet, but to glorify that God who does those things. Your duty is not to investigate. Hallelujah. Who prayed, what, when, who is more accurate? So in the days of uh, uh, Prophet Elijah, this was a challenge. Contention 
between gods, the idolatry and true worship. And, and I just saw that it is not well defined who true God is. And as part of one of his duties, he is first supposed to draw people to the true God. If there is a prophet who does not draw people to God, then that prophet is not yet a prophet. A prophet has such a mighty grace that causes people to fear God and to their hearts to come back to God. A prophet makes the hearts of men to, to melt and feel compelled to go back to God. Another duty of a prophet is to reveal God and to reveal him in his power. Not just communicating. A prophet is supposed to reveal God and demonstrate that God so that people can see the difference. It's not just prophesying about tomorrow. It's about causing the hearts of men to be revived towards God. And it's supposed to demonstrate that God. A prophet must demonstrate God. Hallelujah. Baal prophets are idol worshippers in this case. They believe and they are convinced that they carry the true God themselves. And the prophet of God in Elijah is here who has encountered a wrong him. And he feels that these people are misreading the society, the community in his time, in his generation. And as much as he is a prophet, he is not forgetting that a prophet is also a leader. Hallelujah. And I want us to see a writer today from the context of a leader. And what a leader should do in his time of leadership. In your time of life, in this generation, what should you do? When Elijah saw that there is a mixed grill in terms of faith, his heart started burning and he developed anger and cheers against these people because of what they were doing to God's people. And that is why a true leader must have a true encounter with God whom he claims to serve. You can't be a godly leader and you've not encountered God. Because if you have not encountered God, you will not develop this kind of pain or this kind of challenge to challenge evil altars. Because there is nothing to offend you. There is nothing to offend you. Those people who are in a relationship if you realize that maybe your girlfriend is being taken down by another guy, not you, you'll be offended. Why? Because there is a relationship or your boyfriend. There is a relationship. If you have a business somewhere and somebody comes and begins to, to destroy your goods that you sell there, you will not stand and watch. Because there is a connection between you and that business. Anybody who touches that business, it means you have something to claim from it. Therefore, 
it can't go easily with you. When people have not encountered God, even when God's work is being destroyed, they don't feel pain. They don't even respond. One of the signs to show you that you are not yet connected to what God has called you to do is when you can't stand to defend it. Are you getting me? If you find a brother or a sister in Christ being tormented and to you it means nothing and this is a brother and this is a sister from the same, same kingdom that you claim to profess something is wrong with you. It's just like finding one of your brothers or sisters from your family who is suffering and then you don't feel anything. If that happens, then that's a dangerous situation. It means you people, you are no longer connected. Something died between you. Something died. Because I, I will feel pain if I find my own brother, biological brother or sister, going through a situation that is not pleasing in their lives. So, one of the pointers that tell you that you are really sold into this business of the kingdom is how you react when things are not working well with the kingdom. How do you react? If you're that person who is going to enjoy and clap when people's marriages are breaking, then you know the devil is the one doing that business. And you claim to be in the kingdom. You're the first person to go announcing and spreading news that I don't see them coming together again. There's no pain about it. Then, you've not encountered God. The God of this kingdom. If his business can be attacked and you are comfortable, then there is a problem with you. If your faith, your very own faith can be under attack and you are doing nothing about it, you know very well this is faith under attack. You are not expressing God the way you ought to. You are not making those decisions that are promoting your relationship with God. And you are comfortable. You are under attack. You've developed a faithless life. You've developed a prayerless life. You are disobeying so many things and you are comfortable then you are under attack. It means you have been snatched from the kingdom. Because if truly you are in the kingdom, when something wrong is happening to the kingdom, you need to react. A writer did not keep quiet. And it is possible to say, Kila mtu wa shukulika na maisha yake. After all, ina ni husu nini? Si mtu wa ena jana mkili yake. That is not what we see. When we know that we have been called to win the world to God, we don't say, watch a kila mtu wa ena vita nataka. When we see idolatry has been rifted and raised in the churches, that the wrong faith, the wrong doctrine has been planted in people's hearts. Yet we claim to be men and women of the kingdom. We don't keep quiet if we have an encounter with God. We have an encounter with his kingdom. We will stand to defend it. One of the things that will explain to you where you stand in this kingdom is how you behave towards it. If it is none of your business, 
I pity you. Elijah was there as a leader of his time in a prophetic office. He asked the people in 1 Kings 18 verses 21 and Elijah came to all the people and said how long hurt you between two opinions if the Lord be God follow him but if Baal then follow him and the people answered him not a word mm -hmm. This is a bad and speaking already. For how long will you live between two opinions? Which are these two opinions? This is about idolatry and true God. Can you see? It is not God who is telling Elijah. Can you do something concerning this? He's not even saying, and God spoke to me to say this to the people. No. A true reader will have a true burden. And when you stand and you don't see things moving right, you stand up and announce and you want to give the direction that people should follow because you are not comfortable. So if you are in leadership, but there is nothing that touches you when things are going wrong, then that leadership of yours is fake. If you claim to have an anointing, if you claim to have grace, but you are quiet when things are not working well, then it's questionable. We have got so many title carriers. But we have got few readers in those titles. You know, always readers are very few, but followers are very many. Followers of things. But leaders, who is going to stand on the front line? So, let me tell you, church. Speaking to us from the context of Christ's intervention ministry, capacity building, and speaking to us from the context of believers, because all of us, there is a place that God has called us to start. Speaking to us from the context of whichever place, whichever area that God has placed you, I want to tell you this. If you are a true leader, you will not wait to be instructed of the things that you know you are supposed to do. You will stand up and fight. Hallelujah. You will stand up and fight. I was watching a video and I saw somebody who preaches here in Kenya in a certain church saying, I have left a certain denomination. Because these people have refused to promote me. I wanted to be a bishop so that I can serve in a bigger capacity, in a wider way, I don't know how. But because this denomination has refused to make me a bishop, I have pulled out. And now I have opened my own ministry, the church where I can become whatever maximum I would want to become. In all this business, the people that I pity are the followers because it is very scary right now. If I am standing here because I want to possess a big title, I'll be wasting all of your time. You are labor, you are sacrificed to come early in the morning. How sometimes you defend this church, thinking that this man of God is directing us to God. It will all be a waste. And there are so many churches 
with the leaders who are wasting their members. And people have been wasting for many years. By the time they are discovering that I was wasted, life has already caught up with them. There is very little they can do with their life. They end up very bitter. They are bitter with the pastor. They are bitter with churches. And sometimes I will blame the followers and I will say this. Where was God in your heart when you were being misled? Why couldn't you seek God for discernment? Why didn't you invest in seeking God for clear direction? Because people are being wasted. Hallelujah. How can somebody open a church because you want to possess a big title? I wish people could just understand what calling means. You talk to people who have a genuine call. If anything, we are always trying to quit, only that it is not possible. People who are honestly and sincerely called, they will behave like Jonah. Sometimes you are looking for the ship that ends to Tashis. But then you always find a big fish prepared to vomit you in Nineveh all the time. If personally I needed a big title, by the way, I, it has been proposed to me. That was 2019. I think that is when I would have been ordained with those big titles. If now you would be ordained to be a bishop. Let me tell you. There is this man called R. W. Schembach. This R. W. Schembach. He died. How many have seen R. W. Schembach? He was... He was first of all a military man in the U.S. Then after he retired from military, God called him into ministry when he was already retired. He has raised dead people. He's one of the apostolic carriers, apostolic grace carriers in America. Alda eh? Dreschenbach. And Neldai Muse, who finished well. Eh? An old man who would speak with the Lord. A man who has raised even dead people. Do you know which title he used to call it? Brother Shembach. That was his name. Brother Shembach. Even after raising the dead. Brother Shembach. And he's a man who has ministered in many nations. I saw a testimony in one of the videos when he was giving a testimony how he, he prayed for healing of a, a child who had 26 illnesses. Which God cured instantly all of them, confirmed by a medical doctor. In Kenya, if I happen to heal somebody like that, I'll be an archbishop by the end of that day. So, look at Maurice Seluna. He had two titles, but the most famous was Brother Seluna. The man who has touched the whole world. Otherwise, he was evangelist Morris, Salula, brother Salula. He has met who is who in this world. He has moved in the nation. He has gotten the respect and honor that a man would want to see before he departs this earth. But he remains as brother Morris. Look at Bonke, a man who is preaching in a city of six million people in Nigeria. Can you imagine yourself speaking to six million people and you still don't become an archbishop? He had two titles. One, Brother Reinhardt. Two, Evangelist Reinhardt. Okay. No reverend, no bishop, no apostle. What are two Joe two hapa two? A kemeka homa hapa. protocol. Protocol. 
Hiyo kanisa kuna mafuta ni kama itambui mafuta. Aitambui bado wananiita juu. Aitambui mafuta. I mean Leadership is not about seeking titles. It is about delivering what God has called us to do. Jesus alikuwa anangojea watu tu waseme yeye ni nani na wengine walikuwa wanamuita rabbi teacher because that is how he was ministering to them. Wengine wanamuita prophet. I perceive you are a prophet. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Si ugonje watu wahudumiwe wajue wewe ni nani. Wacha kujipandika title. And that title is raising a lot of expectations that you cannot deliver. So you leave people frustrated. So leadership and title I want to separate them. And I want to talk about the true leadership that seeks to do the true assignment irrespective of titles that this person is ready to die doing what God called him or her to do hallelujah mm. yes na kiburi ingia kwa sababu ya kipao kitambo alikuwa mtu mzuri sana in the leadership we should not be carried away by titles hallelujah Elijah was stirred up in his heart. I have to combine this with the Bible study now because we started late. He was stirred up in the heart, in the spirit. And he asked, for how long are we going to stay between these two opinions? So, I want to talk about some facts here. When God wants to do his work in the earth, he uses an agency called leaders. That's point number one I want you to get. As a fact, as a matter of fact, that God does his work on earth through the agency of leaders. God does his work on the earth through the agency of leaders. Kwa hivyo kuna mahali mungu anawekanga kila mtu wa cheze raini yaki mzuri. That is the agency that God will use. Dio maana we cannot live without a president. We imagine a nation without leaders. Somebody that you despise is respected somewhere else. Hallelujah. Wewe unaona DJ hapa akameketi. Unaona lakini akamtoto tu. Lakini kule shule kuna watu wanakaheshimu. Especially wale wamekuja wakapata kwa hiyo class iko juu kanaonekana kama kiwa si si kila mtu kuna wale watu wanamheshimu bwana asifiwe sana hata joki pale kuna wale watu wanamheshimu wanaona kakiwa kalita kila mtu kuna mahali anaheshimika so kupitia leadership that is how god establishes his work and the second fact i want you to know God uses leaders as agents of change. Leaders are agents of change. So if you are a leader, if God is raising you because you are, God is raising you to make a difference. I want it to enter into a spirit right now into a eternal system that you are an agent of change. Therefore, every leader must become the change that he or she wants to see. Are we together? If you want to see things changing as a leader, the first change will come from you, not from them. If you are not changing, if you are not getting transformed, nothing will change. You told your family that you gave your life to Jesus. Today they see you as their spiritual leader. If nothing will change, they will question that faith. They want to say something that can confirm to them that you became a different person. 
You must become an agent of change by first becoming the change that you want to see. Are you still bitter the way they used to see you? And you are born again. You are still struggling with the anger and revenge when they are talking about how they will revenge against your neighbors because of the way they are looking proud and bouncing. In the room. Whenever they see you, they want to make you feel useless. And you find your sisters worked up and you are training them and telling them to our nation. I will show you what we will do. You team up together. You are not an agent of change. You are still propelling anger, revenge, and war. Therefore, if you want things to change, you must invoke the forces that bring change. What are the forces that bring change? Some of the forces that bring change is one, welcoming the principles of the kingdom to function in your life. Allowing the development of the fruit of the spirit. Allowing the development of the fruit of the spirit in your, in your life. You must allow the word of God to change you to become that kingdom quality that God can trust. Now listen to me. The church doesn't have capacity. There is a grace and a multiplication that we cannot hold. Because we have no capacity to hold that. It's like putting upon a small child 50 kilograms on him or her and telling the child to walk. It is not possible. But you have to build capacity. I want to give a good example here. For instance, we are praying, oh God, increase us in this church. Oh God, we are praying for 200 people. Let me tell you, if God happens to bring 500 people in this church, but our capacity is still 50 people, in three months time, the 500 will go down to what you can handle. Do you know that? Yes. It will go down to 50. Because your capacity is 50. A good example. If you are given a church leadership that has 500 people and your capacity is 20, in three months time, that church will be 20 people. Because that is what your capacity is reflecting. Those are the only people that your capacity is able to affect. The less are feeling misplaced, they feel that we are not recognized. It's like we don't really receive what we came for in this church. So there will be too much gaps. So when somebody feels like I'm unwanted here, I, I am not receiving the impact that I thought I came for, that person will look for a place where he or she can get more help. And the number reduces to 20 because your capacity is 20. If somebody's capacity is 1,000, you are taking to a church that has 20 members. In three months a time, that church will be 1,000 people. For instance, our spiritual father, Archbishop Harrison Nama, imagine if he became a pastor here. Tell me how many Sundays this hall will be, will, be, will, be, will be able to serve you. How many Sundays? I think that the only the one that first day when you come here because the, you come here thinking it's Pastor Ken, but then at Bishop stands, from today I'm the pastor of this church. I want you same people who do not bring people here. You will call all your people will be traveling from your village. Saying that Bishop Pastor went to Ujeni. You same people. Same church, same space, same platform. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Maybe. With a paper kit in the You call everybody. Now, you can get a street, 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 you can get a street,
Because capacity yake si ya watu 20. Kivutio chake si cha watu 20. So akienda mahali kuna watu wachache lazima afanye nini? I try to, to explain to you why it is important for a leader to 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 build capacity. Are we together? Yes. No, if you don't become something that people can admire. Hata ukishinda ukiwambia, "Oh, kuja kwa tuja." Oh, kuja kwa. Hakuja chachu umkoroga ndio umemkoroga hapo kwa estet. Si si wafadhali tu akumsike na hapo. Wacha akumsike na hiyo ile umemuonesha imetosha. Alafu akufuate hapa. Nani? Ah. Hata kuja. Hata kuja. What can be admired? What things do you do that make people feel that you are a force? You are a power. Hallelujah. That's how capacity behaves. If your capacity is small and you are given a big responsibility, you reduce it to your level. If your capacity is huge and you are given a small responsibility you build it to become a huge thing I don't want to ask you that question but now you know why we are not growing Hallelujah When you see that happening don't bring the people bring the capacity yes don't bring the people bring the capacity <laughs> that is what is having the problem is not the people the capacity cannot allow hallelujah you are not persuasive qualities of a real leader a true leader a real leader and quality number one is a true or a real leader has a stand with God. Hallelujah. Even a believer who is true, you must have a stand with God. A true leader will fear God. You see what Elijah said? Elijah said, as the Lord Hallelujah. Can, can you see? He has a stand. This is the God that he serves. If you want to stand as a true leader, as an influence, as an agent of change, and you have got no stand with God, you will not make it. You just have a good desire that will not come to pass. Number two, a real true leader, he must stand out in the crowd. A real true leader is the one who can stand out in the crowd. You know, sometimes you find people waiting for things to happen. You know, nobody is stepping out to challenge anything. True leaders are men and women of conviction. They stand out. They are ready to take a stand even if they are alone. They don't wait for the crowd to come and help them to stand out. Sometimes we have not stepped out to do the right thing and cause impact because we feel like akuna mtu mwingine anakuja kutuweka nguvu. Oi, wewe unakuja kuweka nguvu and you claim to be a leader. Oh no. When Abigail knew that my husband will be finished by the king she behaved like a leader because even women, if you are a wife or a husband, you are a leader. 
She decided, oh no, I will not wait for this to happen. And she went to plead with the king. And the same thing was to say, I will and that is how the king had mercy on the husband. She stood alone, standing out, saving the situation. Because they are not victims of crowd influence. That principle has helped me so much to achieve a lot, especially in ministry. Because sometimes I found myself in a situation whereby it's like the church is declining. It's like members are not ready even to give towards the ministry. It's like the leaders are not willing to cooperate. It's like the landlord is not understanding me. You know, gone through all this. But I had to stand out as a leader in some of these situations. I know that the follower will not understand some of these things if I explain to him or her. They will run away. I stand as a leader. And that's why we see our people when we sign our mills and pack and I saw another one listen. Ameuza gari yake filda. Wakati ameitisha watu wamekataa kutoa na kanisa iko na watu karibu wote tofauti. Wakataa kutoa pesa. Akaambia Mungu, uliniita peke yangu. Akauza gari na akaitangaza kwa Facebook, social media, nikaona akitangaza akasema nataka kuja na kanisa. Na akaiuza, ndika aliuza kama ile tande. Na niliona akianza kujenga. Eh? Nikajua huyu ameitwa ile ya kweli. One day so serious, huh? Oh yes. That's what David does. And I just talk to him, but you are come to me, you are not there, na eh? Are you so much more peckyake? We na kubu ka wakati kwetu kutuli kwa kuna bamu asa na mama ya mau chao inyumbani. Are two thousand. Na nikaangalia nikaona hii vita zile ya kawaida hii na usika mambo ya ushirikina sana. Si kupotea watu wa yale ushirikina ni because wakati hata ungeza kuambia mimi ninaona kama tunatupia uchangu. Na mbogo wewe mwaona uchangu. Uchangu wewe unaona watu wewe. Unaona watu uchangu wewe. Mwaona uchangu. Na kwanza wale watu wanadai ukiangalia ni wamekaa wa mrao wa saidi. Yule anakataa. Unaona kabisa huyu ya mrao yeye serious. Mimi ninaota ndoto Ninaona vitu zinafanyika. Naona makubwa zinapunja zikiwa na mauta makubwa zinatupiga. Kuku inakupiga mpaka inakurua mpaka unaanguka chini. Wewe kuku inaweza kukuangusha chini kwenye mkwe. Wewe unaota doto unaona kuku amekupiga amekuwana mpaka amekuangusha chini ndio unakuja kusaidiwa. Hiyo ni kuku gani ambaye ana nguvu ya kuangusha mwanamume chini? Unless that kuku is empowered. Kwa hivyo kuongea mtu kinu ngolo hii Kiongea Hata wala wanasebabu wa meboka unongea mtu zingine Zinaanza kuboka siri mkwa Wanaanza kuchukua na hati chini Kwa hivyo unajamaza tu Nasema mtu zingine utafanya peke hako Unamuka munapata Kinyesi imeweko wako chini kwa murangu Na ingine imegonga munangwa To Na ni ya mtu na shida huyu mtu gani alikuja kunya mrango kile nimesimama akakunya hapo na ikile ikaanguka hapo Atirafu tu anasema ni chuki ni chuki we chuki 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 pokea salamu zangu kama hiyo ni chuki Yeye ni mtu benaso nikaanza kuomba Nachukua mpaka mchana na kuja hapa kuiongea na Nairobi wakati kwa karibu nikoni na shika anga ya kwetu maana shetani alishika nazunguka hii shamba yote matapao ya giza yote na yani Kitu zingine ukifanya unaonekana kama wewe ndio mgamba But when the results came 
I was able to speak and say, Why? Yeah, you see, Mama, really? Yes, Mama. Una sacrifice vitu. Una sacrifice baka watu wanafikiria ni vile umekuwa mwendo wa siku kijipilania vita. Elijah had to stand out. And that's why I've said that true leaders are not victims of crowd. And that is why real leaders are very scarce. A lot of people are addicted to human opinion. And that is what you think it is true. Look at the life of Jacob. Even with the pressure from the brothers, he still stood. And he knew he would become something. He spoke out his dreams. And one day when he called them to Egypt, and this time he is a prime minister, they could not be able to believe that this is the same guy and he told them don't worry I am Joseph you are not dreaming this is real welcome to the palace two leaders they have to stand out in the crowd even in this church I want to tell you when people come and find a church that has got a few people who are very confident very concerned they are causing things to move they are praying with the energy and power. They are dressed well. They look like they are representing the kingdom. That is what is going to make some people to believe that there is God in this church. Not even the pastor. Do you know there are people who remain in the church not because they respect the pastor, but some. I remember somewhere that, that is the pillar of that pastor. That's why there are people who can leave the church and you find that they have left with that with a crown, meaning they had some level of influence. They were not readers, but I'm a talk about you. Number three, little leaders accept responsibility. Little leaders accept responsibility. In normal circumstances, Ordinary people will look for who to blame. Who has not done what? But the true leader will take responsibility and say, I failed. I was supposed to take care of this and do it the way it's good to be. If you're that person who points fingers to others and you claim to be a leader, you are not yet a leader. A leader must develop an intentional attitude that takes care of things. An attitude that is self-responsible. You take responsibility. If you are a leader, you claim to be somebody that you want to have influence and you don't take responsibility, nobody will trust you. I will also not trust you. Even here in church, I know people that I can entrust certain things and those that I cannot entrust certain things. Kuna watu ni najua bizuri na waweza wacha jambo na niende na nilale. Lakini, kuna watu na nasikia, nani muliatia hii ni fulani, woi, haya, pigia na mi pia, hawe hako. Eh? Kuna sikia uya na ikati back up. Sababu kuna jua ni any time uya kawa angusha. We are the one So, it is known, and every living human being will always be attracted by a responsible person. Ask many sisters here. They will all tell you, I want to be married by a responsible man. Somebody will take care of me. Somebody will protect me. <laughs> that is what they do. you marry? Nasikwa hivi unasikia kama umefichwa kama toto niliona toto amepata mtu nasikia wanasema hiyo ime hiyo ime na sio people want always to live around people who are responsible because hata unahitaji kukaa mahali hautatumiwa vibaya sio 
Now, if you know that, why don't you become part of the people who will create that kind of an atmosphere where people feel secure? When people bring their children here in this church, they will feel that they are secure the way their children are being handled in that church. Sio mtu akienda anaanza kusema what what you talk about the brand new kwanza a detox kwa yao watoto because that sima wamefurugwa na maroho wao. People want to go to a place where they see that there is responsibility. And when leaders are not responsible they affect growth they affect spiritual growth they affect church growth in all areas that's why i always say that if your leader some things do them intentionally see you buy a kulipata tide na na mpesa but sometimes when you are with our once in a while it's good also for people to be seeing you chewing here being prayerful there's something that people learn yes if you want to create that environment of responsibility a leader must be very intentional in why sometimes you do things. It's because there is something that you want people to learn. I want you from today to take yourself as somebody who has people that are being molded by what you do. What you speak, the way you respond to things. Leaders must accept responsibility. So they must have that capacity to take the initiative if things don't happen then you also don't happen <laughs> hallelujah that if things have not happened is because your voice not happened <laughs> maybe you are absent but sometimes also leader will demonstrate responsibility by always assigning people especially in the areas where they are supposed to be present but because they are absent it means things will not feel they have set as uh, things in order hata mtu atajua kama fulani ayuko lakini ukiona mtu akitaka kama ayuko shui absent no apology no nothing na tunakaa hapa tukingojea tunaanza kujipanga hai kifika hapo nitujipange that person is not a leader you are not how can you assume that things will happen and you are the one who should be causing them to happen it is possible to do things but without responsibility there will be no possibility so be responsible even for your own faith for your own life the way you demonstrate things out there and even in the church hallelujah number four real leaders see the problem and danger that others cannot see real leaders see the problem or challenges and danger that others cannot see a true leader will always understand the way things ought to happen for instance, if I want to demonstrate, I go back a little bit on the real leaders accepting responsibility. Elijah accepted the responsibility that I am the one in charge right now as a prophet. I will not wait to see who else is here with me. I'll take responsibility that why there is this idolatry is because I have not showed up. That's why you have to stand and show up. Hallelujah. He showed up. And then he saw the problem. Later he, he, he heard that there were 7,000 other prophets. But where were they when this problem was persisting? That there's too much idolatry with bad prophets reading. Where were they? Hmm. So Sometimes you can be a minister of other leaders but things are not being right. What are you supposed to do? You need to take responsibility. When you see the problem and data that others cannot see, it's time to jump out and rectify. Praise the Lord. 
Yes. Elijah saw the problem of Baal in his time. The Baal worship. That was a problem. Nobody else was complaining. There are moments I go to some place and everybody saying everything is alright here. But when I begin to look around, I find some things that are not okay. Why am I able to see some of these things? Because a leader has another eye. A leader has a discernment. A leader is able to see sometimes when people are glorifying something, a leader is able to discern and say, no, this one is special. It's not the time to clap. It's the time to cry for mercy. Hallelujah. That's a leader. You need to see the problem and data that others cannot see. You need to. If you are a leader, you, you need to know why sometimes it's good to keep distance from certain things and why some things need to be closer to you. It is dangerous sometimes to keep some people distance. To keep a distance away from them because they are supposed to be close to you. It is also dangerous to, to keep some people near you when they are supposed to be steps away from you. Because of danger. I am a leader. I know where the danger is. Sometimes God will help me to know it. That's why sometimes leaders will make decisions that others will not understand. But later, you come to understand why they had to make such decisions. There are times when you hear me guiding you on certain companies of people. Some of you here have called you and told you, please stop the company of this type of people. Even if you see me walking with them, I know how I deal with them. Don't open your own heart there. I know how I feel that. So don't go there with your heart because you think, ah, I always see pastor with this person. Please keep distance. Hallelujah. Yes. I know the reason. I know the reason. There are people who used to fellowship with us in this church who no longer fellowships with us. I still maintain contact with some of those people. But I have to watch my limits in terms of the way I relate with them. And that's why you see sometimes when I see people not being very committed in the church, I remove them from the group. This could be betrayers. And as they be short, and I'm going to give a head. Or I'm going to give a head. Or I'm going to give a head. Or I'm going to give a kupiga kazi ya mungu. Wali unafikiri ya nga unawanaka wakati ngini tukichukua to hizo. Kala kunasema, eh, pastor spisi ya na muamua watu. <laughs> eh? Kuna vitu tunaangalia na tunaona atari na kuja hapa. Praise the Lord. We assess danger. <laughs> We see things that others will not see. So, there, there are people I can visit and I will, not, I will not want to have a photo with them that can appear anywhere in the social media wise. Huyo, tumekutana nene kama ye ye, tumiongea kiyo, tumiongea, nimeumwacha, vile ya mimuwacha, mini meenda. Lakini, si kependa watu wakini watuwe kama nimikuwa maali kama hapo. Sababu, my nation was mine, I knew why, because Kuna watu wataona, oh, pastor kwa kwa, it will look like an endorsement. Na kwa kino na fuku wamba, roho marapanja kama, awa wanaitua makita wadege. Ka, unetua kakisikia mama meyata, atakai kutuwe nini ya mepepa. Ka, wewe atiria, ne kumesa, kumesa, kumesa. Sasa mimi kuna watu wengine ni kikutana nao mimi, ni takutana nao kama mimi. Na hindi kesi ni liya naisi kima mejua, oh, tulikuwa na nafrani mwambia wae. Kama uliniona tukiwa na fulani, tabadari. Mimi nina kuwaga hapa nikiwa nime kanyaga na bidoe. Na bidoe. Nikimaliza kile nafanya nina. Because it will look like an endorsement. Manaka kuna deja naona. Mutu watafikiria hao ni vile staki ya igiana na huyo. Haya, igiana. Igiana. 
Alafu tunguanjia ya tuwane. Kama za msema, Tuyo pa, mtu pasta na gana, gana muna gani. He didn't know that man is very dirty. Dirty, dirty. How does pasta live with that? Me, I know how. That's why I did not want to introduce another person there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know how and why I am there. Eh? There are pretensions that in the divine men, them I cannot, I will not want to. Even if they are big celebrities, they are good. See, you can tell it to the guy to the people and our pizza. So, me, me, I want to have time. So, I'm not to be to see you together. I have to be to see you together. I have to be to see you together. Mimi biashara yangu inakuanga hii kitu na kula nikimaliza biashara hii inafanya nini? Inaishia hapo. Hata hizo tapata watu wanaenda wanauza paka siri za kanisa, siri za wandugu na wandanda, fulani hapo na machanga moto, hii hiyo kanisa. Na sasa hivi unaongea na wale watu wanapiga kanisa. So, unakuwa na wisdom ya kujua in certain setups, how do you present yourself? Mki usinja ukafungulia hatari. Hallelujah. Oh yes. Ata kuna discussion of why kuruhusu ukiwa alida. Because ukiangalia ni utaona starata danger na problem. Yo discussion unaizimia ba. Ba. Unaizimia bali na kuisimamishia bali. Na unasema mimi, sitaki kuitishwa na mungu ndamu ya watu hapa. Damu ya mtuma hapa, on account of my own. Hii unaizimia ba. Hallelujah. Una moja ni nulisa, umeandri angaji huko ni kamambi utitaka kujua kwa tuna endelea na siyuku uja jima pili moja. Kandisani. Eh, kusi nulisa, kuja chanti, siyuri toka, eh. Na sisi ni marafiki, eh. Kunja, uturia, ona vile tuna, tuna endelea. Nama unagani Julius. Nama unagani kini. Which is the best way to know? Sia kuja ya chukwe evidence. Muzuri. Eh, kuja juma pili. Hata hakuna mtu wanaweza kuliza. Uduria, uwanya vile tunaengarea. Na inaisha hiku. Hallelujah. Eh, eh, tunasaitika watu wa mungu. Little leaders take risks. Little leaders take risks. This story of Elijah and the bad prophet is all about taking risks. God has always reserved special grace for risk takers. There is an anointing that always comes when you as a leader take risk. God will make sure to back you in that experience of taking risk. Wherever you are. Unaweza kumejiwa mahali pa kazini. Na kuna issue unaona hii. Itapindi tu niifanye kama mimi. Nikaona when you take risk there is a grace that comes upon you. God begins to release a certain anointing. And risk takers are the people who have always called the day because you operate in an arena that has no competition. People fear risk. Hey. Risk takers are few. And if you are a leader, will have impact. They must be taking risk. What do you think of a story, the story of David and Goliath? Does it show any risk? That was risk, yeah? What do you think of Goliath standing there very well armed? And David without any experience of war or fighting with men. Without a weapon. Standing before God yet, and the old Israel is there with their king. And God yet is there with the army. It was a risky business. He confronted it, and there was a risk. I want to say this there's a dimension of an answer you will never experience until you take risk. Some answers only come by risk. Some answers will only come by risk. That's why some of us, there are things we have done and we can only do it to manage Kikitu Flag. And it was risky. Ukalipa ilikuwa shida, but you can now look back and smile and say, wow. 
hapa nilisikia mungu it was risky the opportunities you find in a place and you cannot access them easily until you take risk David had no weapon when he was confronting um, Goliath in the book of Psalms 89 verses 19 the Bible says then he spoke in a vision to your holy one and said I have given help to one who is mighty I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have given help to those, to one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. Listen, what do I mean by that scripture? It is God who holds people to stand and win. When they, hold, when they take risk, the help comes from God and God will always exalt you. If God has placed you as a leader, you've been given responsibility by people or people bless you as a leader, you must be a risk taker. It was risky for Elijah to go and say, can we meet at the mountain and let each of you carry a bull will go there and sacrifice and a fat one and we will not carry any matchbox. We will pray and that God who answers by fire. He is the one that we shall approve as our God. Wewe angalia hiyo scenario, unaenda kwa mlima na hakuna kubeba kiberiti, hakuna kubeba mafuta ya taa, ati mtaoma moto itoke mbinguni. Is that not risky? Hallelujah. Now, if you think it is simple, why don't you try even in the secret? Then God will answer us by fire today. Is the Makaratas. Hallelujah. Why don't you just try in the secret? And bring your own small fire. Then you will appreciate this experience of a righteous. And you accept that God was with you. Praise the Lord. Yes. I want to tell you, as a leader, if you don't take risks, there are dimensions of answers that you will never get. That's why a writer, for him to get this dimension of an answer, something extraordinary had to happen. And you see in all these things it is not God who is telling you, do this, call them on the mountain. Say that there will be no much box, that fire will come from heaven. No. He is taking his own risk based on the understanding and the encounters that he has had with God. Remember point number one, we said that a real leader must have a stand with God. That is a stand that is going to carry you through. Praise the Lord. So there is a grace reserved for the risk takers. If you are a leader who cannot go beyond yourself sometimes to solve things, then you are not a living qualified leader. A true leader must be able to go beyond him or herself. Sacrifice the risk. I've given you an example here of a pastor who sold his car. Now he's using Matatu. Because he wants to build a, a church. A structure. That is risk. He doesn't know whether another car will come. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is risky. Number eight. Real leaders do not discriminate. Real leaders do not discriminate. So they offer what we call equal opportunity. Leaders don't discriminate. As a leader, you must learn to offer equal opportunities. You don't manipulate. You don't discriminate. We are people from different tribes here. We've got different backgrounds. There are those with 
different levels of their, their income and all that. I respect all of them. Not because this one has much, this one doesn't have. A little leader must know how to balance the way you, you, you treat people, the way you deal with people. You must balance. You should not discriminate. And that's why I said in this church, you don't give certain people more respect because they are dressed in a suit and the other one came in a trouser jeans. We are all in the house of the Lord. We did not come for a, for a fashion show. Hallelujah. A true leader should never discriminate. Pray for people. Pray for people without discriminating. A true leader for you to achieve that then you must be very loving. Somebody, you must love people. And I talk about agape love. Appreciate people the way they are. Don't see people as if they are useless. That's why I told the praise and worship team here. Sometimes when you rise to tell people, get up, we sing, and then you see some people are saying, Kwa nyamu kukunu wa chai? Nikweli, kuna mtu? Kama mimi paidresi chakunu? This is the first thing I have to say. Me is the cook. Who said my name? Dio, see the cook my child. Let's see what you did. Did you ever put the chair? You I'm telling you the truth. I come and 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 I Give people equal opportunity. Create an atmosphere of love. I am convinced we can do better than this. I am convinced we can do better than this. You are in the right place. I am convinced we can do better than this. Mimi nikienda mahali nisikie mazungumzo ya aina hiyo. Na nataka kusikia niko mahali hatari. Kama tabia hapa tu ni kama umechoka. Unajua kuna watu wametoka night shift. Sita wana watu kama akina mama yake kuna kujanga hapo hapo umetoka night shift. Amelala akifanya kazi usiku na anapitia hapa. Alafu naona anasinzia alafu naanza kusema, "Eh, unalala kwako alafu unakuja kurona kanisani." Kapra uanze kuambia watu maneno tafadhali. A true leader must be very careful. Kuna mtu wana wangana na mwilia, uwezi kuwa uko on. Sometimes the way works in the shit, anakujaba hapa labda hata na hiyo, kameraluka hapa kwa metoka kazi. Wakati mwini unaona jene kubambana kwa usigisi kito. Look for a better language. Hallelujah. Let people feel loved. Let people feel that they did not come in your territory to oppress them. Because muna vata vata wana watu. Let people feel at Jesus. Or at a place where they can encounter God. Don't look like the commander in chief of the defense forces. Don't manipulate people. Mimi, now nanga, wakati mungine makaniza zingine, people are called. Alafu wa naambiwa, those who have got 10,000 start their side. 10,000 and above. Those who are 500 stand their side. Bring the oil. I want to anoint these ones because they have paid a heavy price. <laughs> because they have paid a heavy price of 10,000. Do you know there is somebody there with 5,000 which is equivalent to that woman who gave the shekel, the one, the 50 cents. That is the last. That is the biggest, even bigger than the 100,000 that this people might be having. Now, when you start ministering like that, because I know some of the people I'm ministering to here today, in the next two, five years, there will be pastors. You'll be ministers and you'll be in other leadership. Please don't make people feel inferior or they have not done the right thing. If somebody has sacrificed with their own heart to do whatever they want to do for God, give them the opportunity to feel that they are blessed. Despised. Whatever they have brought to the altar to God in the name of the Lord, and their hearts had already covenanted with God. This is what I'm doing for my God. 
given the due respect and honor that they deserves. Praise the Lord. Yes. That is why so whenever we have Thanksgiving here, I take it very seriously. I take it very seriously. You don't know what that person is speaking to God. Don't despise people. As a leader, you must offer equal opportunity for everyone. Allow people to feel comfortable. Hallelujah. Let people be. Let people be. There are churches when you enter there, they will discern you by the necklaces that you are wearing and the earrings. The moment they realize these are golden, they deserve the first seat there. So that, that the pastor can also hammer the wand. How God will bless you according to how you will give. Yes, it is true. By the way, God can bless you according to how you give. But that time is not because that is the message. It's because somebody here, they suspect this one can give a million today. The way the person is dressed, I can give a bed to him. He knows that we can come a security alone. We was out here in a necklace and I can give there is a good security. And you can tell me about street like any, I'm a far come of 500,000. Are we together? Little leaders think of others first. That's the point number nine. Little leaders think of others first. If you are a real leader and you don't think about other people, you are always on your top priority. Then you are not supposed to be a leader, you are supposed to be led. Because when you are led, the leader will make you the first priority. So selfishness has killed the way leadership should be demonstrated. Now, when I talked about leaders offering equal opportunity, like in this case of Elijah, even in the promise of Baal, he gave them equal opportunity. He told them, okay. Let each one of us give to his God. The one, that God that will answer by fire becomes our God. And he gave them the opportunity. Sacrifice. Sacrifice them. And give them time. Have your time. Prove your God. And they had all the time. By the way, they can't claim and say that Elijah did not give them time. Even when it looked as if it was not happening and they were cutting themselves on the body brand oozing out, trying to ask, where are you? Where are you, this God of power? Where are you? Come and rescue us. Elijah was relaxing, waiting, giving them equal opportunities. Hallelujah. So, so point number nine is real leaders think of others first. So just look at the way a writer was giving the bad prophets the first chance. If you are a leader and your presence is not felt and your absence is not noted, then it means you are not needed. If you are a leader, your presence is not noted. Your absence is not felt. Then you are not needed. Now, if you have no impact, nobody will mind about you. What can make you to be felt? What can make you to be noted? It is when you put people first. <laughs> There's a time I was very unwell. Um, that was around, I don't know, it was 2013 or 2012. And I remember one woman who came, 
to see me when I was alone. Akasema, sisi tumeambia Mungu tu abadali tuonjeke wewe usiwonjeke. Sababu tunajua pale unatuweka hapo. Sasa tulikuwa tunauliza, Pastor Ken akiwonjeka, hivi tutasaidiwa tena na nani? I remember those statements. Tulikuza sana. Kwa kitwelo. Tulisema Pastor Ken sasa akiwonjeka ni ana tusaidia, na tutasaidiwa na nani? He, nikajua kumbe kuna vile nina influence, kuna vile watu wana When you put people first, even when you are in trouble, those people will pray for you. They will have your burden. When you call them, they will respond. But if you are that selfish person who only want to rise alone and you don't want to mind about other people, the day you will scream, nobody will answer your cry. That is why I always tell leaders, you should think about impact. Don't think about rewards more. Think about impact. Think about impact. Don't think about rewards. Rewards will come very freely if the impact is felt. But if you have no impact, there will be no rewards to motivate you. That's why sometimes the message that is coming from the altar is because people are preaching and ministering from the world perspective. And they are not causing impact. So what happens? People will end up frustrated, especially if those rewards will not come. I want to finish by saying this. Real leaders deal decisively with the enemy. Real leaders will deal decisively with the enemy. Elijah did not spare the Baal prophets. First Kings 18.40 And Elijah said to them, Take the prophets of Baal, let no one of them escape. And they took them and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and sealed them there. You must deal with the enemy. The enemy can be your own character. The enemy can be external forces that want to bring you down. The enemy can be your own perspective, the way you see things. The enemy can be the attitude. The enemy can be the attitude. Deal with the enemy ruthlessly. Don't give the enemy a chance again. If you are in us, you are palating a certain gift and God has started raising you up in that gift and you know what has brought you down, please don't give that thing a chance again to bring you down. Hallelujah. In leadership, you have to take charge. I know God is raising us so that we can be men and women of influence. We've learned a lot from the time we started. And I want to believe that there is something that God has deposited in your heart. Just to do a link up of what I said for those who have come right. We were talking about real leadership and we've learned a lot and we, we've, we've spoken about several points and we say some of the qualities that a true leader must stand, have stand with God. Number two, that a true leader must stand out in the crowd. Number three, we say that a real leader must accept responsibility. We are not pushed to do things. Number four, we say that a real leader must see the problem or uh, danger that others cannot see. Number five, we saw that real leaders must carry the burden. Number six, we saw that leaders must exhibit unusual courage. Sorry, I think I forgot to mention that. Readers must exhibit unusual courage. A writer was very courageous. He confronted the Baal prophet single-handedly. So a leader must exhibit unusual courage. There are things that you must move ahead, head on. Look, when he came out, he confronted the Baal prophet single-handedly. So leader must exhibit 
and use your courage. You must practice that. You must exercise it. Leaders must take risks. Real leaders must offer equal opportunities, no manipulation, no, no discrimination. Real leaders think of others first, and real leaders deal decisively with the enemy. From all those things that we have learned today, I want you to think about yourself. Because we must build capacity. We will not be trusted by God the way we are. We must do some makeups on ourselves. Where are you? How will God use you? How will God trust you? I want us to stand up now in Jesus' name. God wants to use you. God wants you to, to become a great man and a woman of God. God wants you to have victory. God is entrusting many lives in your life. You will carry many. But before that, you need to build yourself. Your capacity needs to be built. God is not raising you so that you can become famous, but He is raising you so that you can become an agent of change. What kind of a person have you been? God wants you to desire like a ranger. When a ranger started confronting the Baal prophets, he repaired the altar. He repaired it. And then he called upon the Lord. The Bible says he put the stones, the twelve stones around it. He was proclaiming that he is serving the God of Israel, the true God. A leader must learn how to repair his or her own altar. There are areas in your life that you need to repair. Because if you don't repair those areas, you will not have the capacity to call fire. If you don't repair those areas in your life, you will not have the power, the strength to challenge idolatry, witchcraft, demonic forces. You will not have the courage and the power to challenge negative opinions of men against you. You will not have the power and strength to challenge low self-esteem, self-pity, rejection, which you are supposed to challenge because God wants to use you as a leader. I feel the Lord putting in my heart that there are people listening to me today that he is preparing to use them in the ministry. You'll be used in his work. Some of you will be used by God in the apostolic office. Some of you, God will enter you into the prophetic offices. You will stand for truth. You will challenge bad prophets. Some of you, God will use you in the evangelistic office. Others will be pastors. Others, teachers of the world. Others, God will use you in other offices, in other graces, in other administrative positions, in the marketplace. But God wants to raise people, agents of change. He's putting it in my heart that I'm looking for men and women who will stand for me. I lack people I can trust. I lack people I can trust. Who is there for me that I may trust him for what I want to do? I lack people I can trust. I want you to open your mouth in your own way and tell God that you are available. And not just telling him. I want you to develop pain and see the need of God. God is having a need. A need of people that he can use. That he can trust. Many are there, but not available. Not ready. Not willing. They are full of reasons. We are so mean with 
the resources that God has given us. And God will keep on saying, I am looking for somebody. And you'll be asking, why is God looking for somebody, yet we are so many? I want to tell you this. When the woman with an issue of blood came behind Jesus and touched the hem of the garment, still Jesus was surrounded by many people, including his disciples. And many people were touching him. But only one touched him with an intention to receive. And that is when a virtue left Jesus, a strength, a power left Jesus and entered that woman. And the flow of the blood stopped and that woman was healed. Why? She came with an intention to experience Jesus. There are many others and others who ask, why do you say that you have been touched? You are surrounded by many people. We are stepping on you. We are touching you from everywhere. When you hear God saying, I'm looking for somebody. It's not because the church is not full. It's not because we don't have many Christians in the, in the country. But because the quality of men and women that God wants to work with. People who are decided people who are dedicated, people who are ready to work, people who can take responsibility, they are not available. God wants you to become his vessel. I feel pain when God comes in a big crowd, he still claims that there is no I can find. It's because the wrong people have filled the, the place God wants us to get people to become the people that he can use. What is God saying concerning you? When he looks down to you, I'm asking you, having given you a lot of strength, having given you power, having given you chance to hear him, having equipped you with the giftings and talents, what are you doing for the sake of his kingdom? Why is the kingdom suffering? Some of you, God has blessed you. You need to be a blessing. There are things that should not be mentioned twice in your ears. But you see, you don't come out. You don't stand out. Why? Sometimes we feel like it is too much of this service. Tunasikia ni kama ni operation. Kumbe ndivyo tunajitanganya. Yet you are there always asking God to use you. How will he use you when you are not the right quality? What are you doing to yourself? Are you building capacity? Oh, God will not just pick anyone. Oh, he will not just pick anyone for nothing. Even when he picked the disciples from everywhere without their knowledge, he had to train them. To make sure that they become people who would have been entrusted with the dimension of the burning of the church. Can God trust you today? I want you to feel challenged. How have you dealt with God? Do you know there are people somewhere crying to get a chance that you have today? But somebody somewhere is crying to have such a chance. A chance to worship, a chance to serve, a chance somewhere. Oh God, somebody is willing to cast down all the crowns for the sake of that service. For the sake of God. But how do you treat it yourself? Think of it. Just think of it. Some of you have not given yourself a chance to have an encounter with God. To mezoya mungu, to kazoya bitu zake, mambo zake, uzoe, uzoe, mazoya, 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 mazoya. 
Ndiyo maana Mungu hawezi kutuaminia mambo makubwa. Akiona wacha niite fulani anganye na wale watu wanaona atakuwa disappointed. Kile anapenda, kile ningependa kuja hapa pale. Pale hakuna mtu amejitoa. Mungu alisaidia na kusaidia hata wewe. Oh. Hebu sikuuza na Mungu nataka kufanya nini na maisha aliyokupatia. Sababu kuna kitu Mungu anatafuta. Mungu anatafuta. Unapatikana kweli. Iko siku itakuja utatamani siku moja tu kama ungelikuwa duniani. Umtumikie Mungu. Iko siku itafika hata kama utakuwa duniani useme tu ungetamani tu kama nilikuwa ile miaka. Ningekuwa tu ile miaka. Ningehusika sana. Iko siku itafika tu. Utatamani kabisa. Sema tu kama kama tu miaka inaweza wewe kwa rivers. Ningerudisha mpaka maarifa. Whatever you want to do for God you need to perfect it completely. Mungu wetu anatuangalia. Na tutazamia tuwe watu wa kuleta mapangiliko. Agents of change. Can God trust you? Can God trust you? Oh yes, it's a question. And how long can he trust you? Nobody can trust anyone who has not built capacity. Nobody can do that. Nobody, nobody, nobody can do that. It's your time, it's your time, it's your time. To make a decision, to talk to God, make a decision. I'll put you in front, in front of my melody. You are all. It is him that matters. Only him that matters. It is him that matters. Nobody else it is him.